We've got a, a really special guest coming up here, and uh, I wish I got to introduce him, but uh, we're going to let, let uh, my upline and good friend Keith Hooper introduce our next guest, and he's got some great questions. You're going to want to take notes, folks. This is uh, phenomenal, phenomenal stuff you're going to hear. So uh, let me turn the call over to Keith Hooper and uh, introduce our next special guest. Thank you, John. You know, it's great to be here. I'm looking back and thinking all those years ago when I first heard about Immunical, what made it stand out was the science, the patterns of use. And that's what separates this, and it still separates us today. And one of those people that was there at the very beginning, and I mean at the very beginning as he walked uh, and, and working with Dr. Bunos, was our next guest, which is Mr. John Molson. And John is such a treasure for all of us here at Immunitech, a, a huge uh, support for all of us, and someone that has a great understanding of not only the product and the business of Immunitech, but as an entrepreneur. His family is the Molson Brewery Company. Uh, just an amazing gentleman to have with us and such a great honor to have you with us today, John. And we're looking forward to hearing about that research that you initiated on the brain with here with Immunical. Welcome to our call, John. Thank you. Anyways, uh, you know, this business is about storytelling and so I decided to put together a little story for you on our research and uh, how it evolved over the last 15 years. So um, to begin with, I hope you're all staying safe and practicing the social distancing guidelines and safe practices as set up by the health authorities. So my subject today is our research on brain health. And I would like to dedicate this to my mentor and friend, Dr. Gustavo Bunos. So scientific research, as I learned, uh, is about formulating questions based on certain hypotheses, then testing those questions in a controlled environment. This is a sequential process, so you take what you learn from the previous study and apply it to new initiatives. We set out to ask a whole new set of questions about the product developed by Dr. Bunos and his team. The first area I will address is our work on autism. In those early years, I had a very unique platform given that I was talking daily to our distributors, doctors, scientists, athletes, and customers. So this gave me a unique perspective on how the product acted in real time across a whole host of issues. I spent hours discussing what I was hearing with Dr. Bunos and Dr. Drogue. We would then overlay those comments against the scientific literature to develop hypotheses about why Munichal was or was not working in certain situations. And one of those subjects early on was autism. We were fielding a lot of calls from parents and doctors about the subject due to the fact that there was fascinating research being developed by scientists about a glutathione deficit in this population. In addition, there were questions about tolerability of milk products for this population. Specifically, could this population tolerate Immunical as it was a whey protein? We set up a study with the University of Texas. The paper came out in 2008 with Dr. Gutman as one of the authors, showing that Immunical is tolerated in the population. So this was very fortuitous because a short time later, I received a call from Gary Margulies, Nova Southeastern University Vice President of Research, who was very interested in the paper and wanted to know if we could explore the possibility of some scientific collaboration. Now, NOVA was one of the largest treatment centers in the U.S. for autism. So I was, so I was very interested to say the least. We were able to come to an agreement and jointly fund a study in 43 to five-year-old children measuring glutathione and parameters of behavior. And while it took 10 years to complete, the trial was a success we were able to show that Immunical increased glutathione and modified some parameters of behavior. We filed a patent in autism in 2018 based on the data from the study. And we're still working with the investigator to get the data published. The next focus, area of focus is on an invaluable partner who helped us develop a lot of the basic science on the brain and later our work in TBI. Dan Linsman is a PhD assistant professor, Department of Biological Sciences at the Eleanor Roosevelt Institute at the University of Denver. And Dr. Lin Linsman was very interested in how glutathione status impacted 
neuroprotection and oxidative damage in the brain. Thanks to a distributor from our network, I was introduced to Dr. Linsman in 2008. And 2009, we began collaborating together. After I sent Dr. Linsman some of our scientific papers, he was really enthusiastic about testing Immunical and some of his models. Now this was a huge break for us because it's not enough to know that something works. You have to know why it works. And Dr. Linsman was the perfect partner to help us expand our understanding of Immunical's impact on brain function. As with most scientists, Dr. Linsman's money to run scientific research came from grants. In this case was no different. Through funding from the Veterans Administration to the tune of about $100,000, Dr. Linsman published his first study on Immunical titled, Cysteine-Rich Whey Supplement Immunical Delays Disease Onset and Prevents Spinal Cord Glutathione Depletion in a Mouse Model of ALS. This was the first evidence demonstrating Immunical's ability to modify glutathione in the brain and the central nervous system. In 2017, Dr. Linsman and his team followed this up by publishing results of his studies in basic science. A cysteine-rich whey supplement Immunical provides neuroprotection from diverse oxidative stress-inducing agents in vitro by preserving cellular glutathione. Between these two papers, we now had a good understanding of how Immunical acted to protect the brain. So the next area of focus now is traumatic brain injury. In 2013, I fielded a call from the assistant of the Surgeon General of the US Air Force, who was a PhD in nutrition and an advisor to some of the military sports teams. He was interested in our products for himself and for some of his athletes. We had many subsequent discussions about the potential benefits of Immunical in the military. And one tantalizing was, one was in TPI and blast injuries. So for after over a year of work on the subject, it looked like we would get a $50,000 study funded by one of the military's research units to look at Immunical in a model of TBI. Then the bottom fell out. The event called sequestration occurred and the funding for research dried up. The project was essentially dead in the water. I decided to take a chance and have Immunical back it and run the study with Dr. Linsman. So this was a study that we started completely from scratch essentially. As part of the research we had to buy some of the equipment for the lab and after much research settled on the model used by the military to test our hypothesis. On August 20th 2018 we published the paper the cysteine rich whey protein supplement Immunical preserves brain glutathione and improves cognitive motor and histopathological indices of traumatic brain injury in a model of cortical impact. Later that year, we filed a patent based on the data from the study. Given the success of the first study, we started a second one examining the potential prophylactic benefits of Immunical over time. As you know, a big question with professional athletes in contact sports is, will I be functional when I retire and beyond? This study is to be completed in 2020 and uh, we'll see you know, what its status is with the current situation. And now we turn our attention to the Lady Davis Institute and the Jewish General Hospital, basic science to MCI. In the fall of 2012, we began working with Hyman M. Shipper, MD, PhD, Professor of Neurology and Medicine, McGill University, and Director of the Alzheimer Risk Assessment Clinic, Lady Davis Institute for Medical Research. Dr. Shipper, like Dr. Linsman, was interested in oxidative stress's impact on the brain and as a consequence, strategies that to help the brain mitigate the damage, most important of which was glutathione. Dr. Shipp was working with a mouse model he had developed in his lab at the Lady Davis Institute. These mice had a defect that caused them to develop a lot of excess iron in the brain and eventually developing schizophrenia. What interested me was that these iron deposition and subsequent oxidative stress is a core feature of brain aging, Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's disease. So we set up a research project to see if Immunical could help protect the brains of these mice from the iron buildup. In 2017, Dr. Shipper published the results. Cysteine-rich whey protein isolate Immunical ameliorates deficits in the mouse model of schizophrenia. 
So Aminical attenuated many of the behavioral, neurochemical, and redox abnormalities observed in the mice, in addition to restoring glutathione homeostasis in the central nervous system. One of the fascinating pieces of data that came out of the study was an effect on a protein called relin. Deficits in relin expression or relin signaling play a pathogenic role in several nervous system disorders, including schizophrenia and Alzheimer's disease. Immunocal was able to rescue relin expression in the prefrontal cortex of the mouse model. We filed a patent in 2018 and we subsequently asked Dr. Linsman to do follow-up research to bolster our, our patent application. He presented the results of that follow-up research at an international Alzheimer's conference in Chicago in 2018. The poster was titled, Cysteine-Rich Whey Protein Immunocal Rescues real in Expression in a Transgenic Mouse Model of Alzheimer's Disease. While all this work was continuing, I was reading about people like Paul Allen and Larry Ellison pouring millions into brain research. Commensurate with this, the US government launched the Connectome Project. This project was a collaboration with multiple university hospitals across the US to look at the brain with new imaging technology. One aspect that caught my eye was the ability to measure glutathione in the brain via this new technology. And with the data that we had generated over the years, together with this new technology and the growing interest in the brain, I was convinced Immunical and Immunitech had to be part of this. The problem was, it was how to quantify what defined healthy brain aging. There was no standard definition that the medical community and scientific community would agree upon. And this would make it extremely difficult to design a study. I decided rather than to look at healthy brain aging, we would look at an aspect of unhealthy brain aging. So we settled on MCI, mild cognitive impairment. Dr. Schipper explained to me that the Jewish General Hospital and Montreal Neurological Institute would be able to mount the study. After two years of protocol development and seeking all the approvals, we launched the study in 2018. Now the kicker to this was that the Canadian government funded a Canadian research project on unhealthy brain aging with an initial $50 million grant. A total of 14 institutions are collaborating, sharing data and results. Dr. Schipper was able to convince his co colleague at the Jewish General Hospital, who was the president of that research consortium to be part of our project. He did it with the data from his mouse study. So the study we're doing now is called uh, Nutritional Intervention with the Dietary Supplement Immunical in MCI Patients, Promotion of Brain Health, uh, and has been underway since 2018. We're looking at changes in cerebral glutathione via imaging together with changes in neuropsychological and cognitive functions. So that was a, you know, a brief overview of uh, our work to date. And in closing, I just want to say that there's one very important reason we've been all, be able to do all this research is because we have a product that works. Well, you know, John, as, I, as I'm listening there and, I, and I'm listening to what you're saying, you gave us just a capsule, but there was 40 years of research that went before that, that led to what you just shared with us. So when you're looking at the amount, the, the, it's a mountain. There's a mountain of research that supports why people should use Immunical every single day. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Keith. You know, and, and you asked me about the early days at Immunitech. We were extremely fortunate because, as I mentioned in, with the brain research, we essentially started from square one because raising glutathione uh, in the blood does not necessarily mean you raise it in the brain. It's two separate mechanisms. So we had to start all that basic science from, uh, from square one. When we formed Immunitech, Dr. Bunos, uh, Dr. Baptiste, uh, Dr. Baruchel, Dr. Kongshavin had already done much of the basic science. So we had a huge leg up on our competition. We were already you know, 15 years ahead of them. And we were able to essentially start doing a lot of these studies because we understood um, how Immunical acted in, with regard to immune function and, and other, in other areas. And that gave us a huge advantage in terms of designing these different studies. Yeah, well, John, you know, it's like all those years ago, you know, the patent on Immunical as an immunotherapy for things that we're not supposed to talk about, you know, <laughs> all of those things. That's what separates us from everything else that's out there. You know, we hear people all the time as, as Dr. Bunos talked about, you know, somebody with an anecdotal story. Okay. That doesn't mean anything. You got to have that research. And that's really what separates us from everything else. 
Well, just, you know, just look at the brain, for instance, okay? We're not just talking about raising glutathione. We're talking about a whole series of different studies, you know, basic science. So it's, it's like uh, laying your foundation. So when you go to speak to someone like Dr. Shipper, and the reason we're able to convince the president of this consortium, because of all the science we had done, you don't, you don't necessarily just get to go and get people like that even if you give them a lot of money, it's the, the science has to make sense for them to put their name to a project like that. And we've done a lot of the science, so we understand already how many cal acts in the brain. And as a consequence, we could go into very important studies like MCI. Like this, this the data from that study will be shared across those 14, 14 institutions in Canada because uh, there's very few answers with regard to dementia, Alzheimer's, and uh, mechanistically, Aminocal is a very important candidate to look at. Well, John, we certainly appreciate you taking the time. And we want to have you back because I want you to relate that story when you met with Dr. Bunos the first time and, and uh, the conversations you and Chuck Roberts had and Dieter Beer. And we want to bring you back to do that on another day. If you'd be willing to do that for us, we'd certainly appreciate you, my man. Sure, I'd love to do that. All right. Well, John, thank you. Thank you so much for, for being with us. And so for everybody who was listening, think about that when you're looking at making a decision of what you and your family want to use as a nutritional supplement. That's what makes Immunitech stand apart is what John Molson and his team and the people that he's led and his partners and the partnership that we have here with Immunitech going forward. So, John, a good day here. Back to you. Wow. We've got, you know, I was taking notes. So. <laughs> Every time I hear John speak, I learn something new about our product. And, you know, just thinking of all of these years that, you know, we've been associated with this and John's become, become not only a, a business partner, but uh, a good friend of mine and, and, and Keith's and so many of, of yours. But uh, John, thank you so much for what you do. Uh, you have made such a difference in people's lives uh, with this product over the years. And, you know, John's really the guy that touches the past and the beginning and the future. Uh, of Immunitech and, and Immunical, and, and uh, I, I listen to these things, and every time, I mean, I got, I, got, I, got, I got four paragraphs of notes here on what he talked about today, and I hear them all the time, so, you know, it's why you want to come to these calls, you're going to, you're going to soak up so much information and knowledge from all of these people that you've heard today, so listen, we got another, another couple of great speakers, so stick around here, um, the next person I'm going to introduce is going to introduce uh, somebody who's done a phenomenal job.